So good morning. Um, good morning, Doc. Yes, sir. So how are you guys? Is it possible that you um, you indicate you you use the Zoom with your name? Is it possible you do that? Okay, thank you. We intend to start right on the dot. I think we are just a minute or so late. Um, we decided to do this short um, interaction with those who would want to become agents uh, for the traveling uh, recruitment we are doing through Job Work Ghana. And we intended to do this because there are several questions that are being asked periodically about the process. And we think that if we have agents, agents will do this work better so that they are remunerated based on, uh, I mean, through the commissions that we'll give to them. So I'm just gonna give you a brief of, I mean, what we expect from you. And we can further ask some questions uh, relative to, this process. Um, I'm going to have Margaret, who is our immigration consultant in Australia, if he's joined, just uh, give us some few tidbits. He's going to have a full section with the, those who will, will be accepted as agents one on one, just to tell you the opportunities that there exist in Australia. So Margaret is going to do that presentation, I mean, next week, same time. But today, what we are going to do is to take you through the process and then any question you have, you can answer. This meeting is expected to last for maximum 40 minutes. And I'm going to go straight to the presentation and just let you know. But more importantly, if, if we can introduce ourselves, that will be fine since we know um, we know this is a close meeting. If we can introduce ourselves and know where we are coming from, can we do that in just a jiffy? Hello. Okay, Doc. My name is Nicholas Ejikum, and I'm the owner of I Dream Consort Limited in Tema, from the 11. All right. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Bless you. Hello, dog. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Eric Piafiapa with Ghana Post and Harbor Authority. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm with some co, co colleagues. So they are also joining my phone for now. Yeah. Who else? I'm Mr. Imos Geraldo. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Princessa Agri. Okay. I'm with um, Job Work Ghana. Okay. Okay. My name is Eva Luko. I'm with Ghana Post and Have Authority. Okay. Good morning, Doug. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm preparing right now. Ghana Communication Technology. Okay. Good morning, Doc. Yes. <clears throat> My name is Hagia Nadra. I'm a sales and marketing executive. Okay. Welcome. Good morning. Good, good morning, Doctor. Yes. Uh, my name is Akustia Sewamriku. I'm the owner of ANN CityLink Travel Limited. All right, welcome, madam. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm seeing another couple of guys on the platform. So you can put your, you can introduce yourself in the chat just to save some time. Um, so just a brief, uh, somewhere 
some 10 years ago, um, we conceptualized this idea of uh, making sure that we are able to bridge what industry and academia is doing. So this thought was something that was growing within us. And fortunately, we've been thinking to put this thing together uh, somewhere 2018, we were successful. So 2019, we we're able to establish the company called Knowledge Web Center. And with Knowledge Web Center, the objective was to train and equip, I mean, applicants with the requisite skills and competencies so that they can function very well in their job, I mean, areas. Now, one of the most essential uh, uh, resource that we have on earth is actually not gold, silver, and all those things, but actually the human being. And which is why in Europe now, as we speak, a number of countries are now readjusting and then making their immigration uh, laws very flexible to be able to accept more human resource to develop their country. Because there's an extent to which you can use robots. There's an extent to which you can use other IT and all that, but the human resource factor is very, very important. And it is in this same line that um, the Australian government, if you watch on YouTube, announced that they have issues with skill shortage. We know that the COVID did harm most of the European countries and they lost a number of lives and all that. Now there are jobs, but there are no human beings to do the job. So we've been just scouting around just to find a very good partnership with someone we think would want to look into the future and not just today. Fortunately, we were able to meet our sister Margaret, who, although Ando Okai, who is a Ghanaian, but moved to Australia somewhere at the age of 11 and is a citizen in Australia now, the family is in Australia. But I've been working as an immigration agent for past uh, some uh, past years, and um, over this period, he has worked with uh, the immigration office. He has also taught his. She's a teacher, so we had a co collaboration with her now to send a number of people to Australia. Our target is that in the next five years, we have four thousand people move from Africa to Australia. Now. She's going to give us a, a kind of uh, a, a presentation this week on Australia today. Australia today, for you to appreciate, I mean, what there is in there for you. For those who watch the video of uh, Michelle, who just left Australia uh, somewhere in June last year, you will appreciate the fact that uh, if at this just six, seven months, She's been able to settle with her husband. And then there are supporting systems just to make sure um, you are able to work very well or feel comfortable and feel welcome. Then it's a place to be. She indicated that she wouldn't trade Australia for any other country as far as possible. And I think these are things that we, we, we had through her testimony. So today, the focus is actually on the agents. So I'm going to tell you about Knowledge Web Center. Knowledge Web Center is a company uh, that uh, was established in some West 2018. And the purpose was to train, uh, offer some training service and consultancy service across Africa. There are other subsidiaries of Knowledge Web Center that is Job Work, which is actually working on the Australia deal now. And there, there's an Energy University and training and consultancy lack of what uh, job work. Now, uh, training and consultancy lack of what Knowledge Web Center. Knowledge Web Center is the supporting, I mean, uh, partner to job work. Now, job work is the one handling this Australian uh, project. And I have my technical team head, Fifi, who is here. Uh, who probably will be sharing some few thoughts on it. So this Knowledge Web Center, if you visit the your Google Knowledge Web Center, we offer different types of what training and also consultancy service. And also there is the job work, which I told you, you see here, 
uh, Australia Working Visa application, where you can just go there and apply. But the main purpose of job work was to just take, I mean, raw talent and then train them. Somebody who just finished the university or is in the university as we speak. You go on this portal and you sign up and you put all your credentials there. What we'll be doing is that you'll be seeing videos that will be posted. And these videos are training videos from YouTube and other areas. And there will be, <laughs> there will be questions that will be asked. I mean, there will be time constraint, I mean, questions, uh, what we call uh, objectives, okay? We, those questions will be there. And then you have to select from the multiple choice, I mean, questions. I mean, if you go through that training, there are other ones that you have to be on Zoom and then demonstrate that you've been able to do that. When it comes to, for instance, uh, data analytics, when we're doing some something basic Excel or an advanced Excel. And to tell you the truth, these are the skills that are needed in Australia and other countries, okay? Even though the formal education certificate is very important, it's going to beef up, but they need the skill sets that you don't go there without anything. So some of these trainings will be posted at the beginning of next week, you will see them. So if you've not signed up with job work, if you want to be an agent, then it's better that you get most of your clients on job work so that they can do this, some of these, uh, uh, go through the, some of these videos and then the training and that get certified. And guess what? Knowledge Web Center has collaborated with Methodist University, which is a full-fledged public university, to be issuing the certificate for the training that we will be delivering. And that, what that means is that whoever doesn't have any certificate can have some sort of training. There will be certificates in uh, plumbing, you have to be certificate in other artisans, and these training will be done, and then the certificate issue. Once you, you get that certification, then it's easy to apply for the Australian job because you have that skill set and you have that certificate. So those who do not have the certification, they, they have a process through which they can do that on job work. If you don't sign up to job work, you will not see the postings, you will not see the not notification, you will not see that if there are some training, I mean, programs. So we are not just looking at just those who qualify, but we'll be able to build other people to that. We also provided a link, uh, uh, a skill set, I mean, uh, PDF file, showed you the, the skill. Now, that thing you see doesn't really mean that that's the only skill set. There are number and tons of them. But that this is what, I mean, we captured. We think that we can, we can, we can show this to you. So if you don't see your skill set in there, it means that you do not qualify. That's not what, I mean, it means. So this is the Energy University. I don't have to talk about this. And this university is collaborating with Methodist University to run online I mean, degree program in artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and all that. You can start here and finish in Germany. You do one course, you get double I mean, certificate. So if you really also want to collaborate on that, it's, I mean, it's welcome. So who is an agent? Who is an agent? So an agent is uh, someone registered with what Knowledge Web Center. No fees required. We do not charge any upfront what fees. No fees required. And that agent should have a physical location as an office. A physical location as an office. And that agent has to understand how to assess online application. You need some IT skills. And then understands fairly the traveling business. A number of people do not, they are not in that business. If you're an agent, you need to understand the dynamics because we do not want to create any problems for others. And also you have the ability to complete online application form on behalf of the applicant and able to meet ta a target of five registered clients in a month. I'm saying that five registered clients in a month. <laughs> I know that with the number of information that we are requesting from you, you may have to do a number of things. I would have to go to Australia, maybe in this first quarter. So I'm putting my document together. And as I'm doing that, I see how it's difficult to get some of these documents if you don't plan well, okay? I mean, you get one that you realize that you don't have the other one. And the role of the uh, agent is to make sure that they educate people very well to be able to get all these documents. There are some documents you don't have. If you don't have it, that's fine. But the more documents you have, the more better the system, that, that it makes things easier 
for them. So if you want to be an agent, then there's uh, an email, I mean, down there, Australia Working Visa Ghana at gmail.com. Just send an application. You don't have to type too much English. Just indicate that I was on the Zoom and I'm interested. I qualify. I mean, based on these requirements. And then I'll send you the form. If he, our uh, technical man will send you the application form for you to fill. Once you fill, we, because we are also embarking on the ISO process, it's important we want to indicate that there was a process we went through uh, before you became an agent, not just that we met on Zoom and all that. So you send a mail to this, we go through the process, and then we would have to come and see your office, that indeed you have an office. Because if we don't do that, we'll have. So we don't want a situation where there will be some challenges as to you um, uh, you don't have an office. Uh, and a couple of guys have asked me, they want to see my office, okay? And indeed, it's important that they see that you have an office. Because if you don't have an office and there's a problem, how, how do they address? So we are using you, the agents, <laughs> as, I mean, the first point of call. So you need to have an office and also able to meet a target of registered clients uh, in, in, in five clients in there. So you send your, your details to this I mean, email address. Um, I'm going to put this later on in the chat, but you can take a screenshot of this if you are online. Let me allow it to stay just for some few minutes so that you can take a screenshot of it. Okay, so let's move. So agent commission. Now, an agent gets 400 US dollars on each application. And I'm saying each successful application, right? Each successful application, that is how much you get. And that money is inclusive. That money is inclusive the um the full charge that we have indicated as a public price okay that money that is inclusive so that is how much is charged uh, uh commission the agent gets 400 dollars on each successful application now things ag agent must not do the agents must not charge any extra amount aside the public price. There will be a time to do that, but the time is not now. That some agents take, say the thing is X amount and they charge even more than that. And there are some people, what they do is the fact that there is a genuine way to travel, they abuse that. We don't do that. Now, for this particular process, we do not charge any upfront fees. We do not charge any upfront fees. In fact, you assisting the person to do the application and then going through that process and the document being accepted, it's what we are paying you $400. So we don't expect you that you charge anything. Maybe you have an application form somewhere and then you charge, and then the cost of the processing becomes unnecessarily high. So this is very, very important. And agents must not give any false hope because we are, the only thing we are doing is that we are processing the vessels for the applicant. We didn't give that promise. We didn't do that announcement that there are jobs in Australia. It is the Minister of Home Affairs in Australia who did that announcement on YouTube, okay? They requested that they need uh, uh, immigrants to come and work in Australia. And it's the same government that has instituted these types of visas. 
So the promise is coming from them, not from us. Our role as, I mean, migration agent is to ensure that you go through the process without any hassle, and then they will grant you their visa. So that is very, very important. You don't need to lure anyone into it that because of X, Y, Z, I mean, you don't need to do that. Myself, I'm going to be in Australia. There are videos that we are going to post to also show you things. And Margaret is going to also show you a number of things next week. And you're going to see how things are, how, how things look like in Australia. There are things that, I mean, Margaret is so expectant that we, we, we even start this thing like yesterday and the people come to Australia because there are job a number of jobs, right? And the fact is, even when there are number of jobs, for this, we don't give people false hope because our role is that we should help in the processes. And then we said agent can, however, provide some services to aid in the completion of the application form. Someone needs uh, a medical report, right? And you want to set up a center there and then collate everything and get a doctor, I mean, in the public uh, government hospital or any recognized hospital to do that report for that person. We do not have control over that. But it's important you let, you let the person know that that is part of the process just to make sure that you don't short chain them. So if you want to make your business more, more, more transparent and more lucrative, you can provide these services. There are a number of them. Um, uh, you can do a uh, uh, passport. We'll talk about the English proficiency. You can, uh, 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 you, have, you can connect to some of these centers that write the exams and provide them with students. That can be done, okay? You can do that. Sorry, Doc, you are muted. Doc, we can't hear you. You yeah. are muted. Sorry, there was an interruption here. So you can offer those services. And these are things that can uh, go in for police, uh, police report, clearance, and other things that have been, uh, have been requested that you should get, OK? That is going to be some sort of services that you have rendering to the agent, uh, the, the applicant, and take note of that, that those services can be rendered. But for the charge, it's a public price. And you have your $400 in it, in, 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 in uh, each of what, the, the routes that you might choose to, I mean, whether you're doing 12 month working visa or, or what we call the skill stream. So let's take note of that. So this is the Australia working visa process for applicants. And this is what you are going to do. And this is where you act as agents for us to explain the process. <clears throat> so the first thing is the online application forms. But we have provided some PDF form because the online application, the first page, if you have not completed, you cannot move to the second page. So you wouldn't know what is in the second page. To address that, we have a form, which I'm going to show to you. That is a, a PDF form. So this is a PDF form. So this PDF form will tell you what you need. So you go through this form as an agent with the applicant. You, are you married? Do you, do you have a spouse? You go through this with them. The, the kids, do you have any medical reports, passports? So you take this and then you outline all the things that the person would need. Proper planning will make the completion of the application form very easy. Okay? So you don't say the person should go for this and come back. And that is why we have provided you with all the information that you need. Okay. Yes. And there are a couple of them. There are a couple yes. of them. Yes. Please, can I take a screenshot of them? Uh, I'm going to send form. this to you. I'm going to send it to you. 
I'm going to send these ones to you, okay? <laughs> Are you okay? Yes, please. I'm going to, yeah. So, so all these things are there. And we can find the same thing on the platform. That's what I'm talking about. When you come here, these are the fields. These are the fields. But you can go to Nest if you have not completed this. And which is why the PDF will help you to know the requirements. And then you know which form to, uh, I mean, which info to look for and all that. Can you see which screen are you looking at? Are you looking at the process now? Are you seeing the process now? I've just changed here. I just want to make sure that. Hello? Hello, Doc. Please, we can hear you. Is, is, is it the process screen you are seeing? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So, the first point is complete an online application form, which requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of planning. There's a lot of information that you need. It might take one up to one month or maybe two weeks to gather all the information, it depends. A police report, maybe three, four days. If you are offering that service and somebody can get it within 48 hours, you are offering that service. That's fine. Uh, doctors, I mean, reports, uh, medical reports, if you can provide that in three days or, or in maximum one month, you should get all this information in. And please, let's not be in the haste, but let's make sure that we get the documentation right. The reason is that the lady who you, list, uh, you, you watch uh, her video, her testimony, it took her 10 days for her visa to be processed, even though 90% of the process, I mean, takes three months. 90% of the process take maximum three months. That's the maximum. It means that there are 10% that might take more if you, you don't provide the right document the back and forth. So our role is that we validate the documentation that we have. We cannot talk about the authenticity, but that the documents are eligible. They are, they are I mean, they are, it's clear to read and they are the right document in terms of the type of it. Of course, you don't use Ghana card for passports. So those things we have to check. So when this thing is done, it comes to the Ghana office. That is us. But you, the agent, are part of our Ghana office. Because we are doing the first-hand validation from your end before it comes to our end. Once it comes to our end, we also go through and we validate. If there are any issue, we'll come back to you. And then it goes to Australia. And this, the Australia Immigration Validate Application to take three weeks. Now, in the Ghana office, there are two levels of authentication. You are doing, you are the agent, you are doing the first authentication. Myself and the our, our let's say, uh, Knowledge Wealth um, Services is also doing the authentication. And the person doing that is the licensed migration what? officer. The licensed, who is Margaret, the name of Margaret. She is the one doing this validation. And that is her role. And if there's something wrong, she will make us correct. Now, the essence of that is that we don't want to go through the system where you get to a stage where there will be rejection. It means that we didn't do our work well. If the rejection is based on the fact that there was some document we didn't submit, then we didn't do our work. And if the rejection is based on the authenticity of the document, then it's a different thing. We can, yeah. we can determine whether a bank statement is correct or not. You get it. But that is the responsibility of the applicant. Yeah. That is the responsibility of the ap applicant. So that is very, very important. <clears throat> now, from here, from point three, so we have done point one, two, three, application, uh, accept application. Here, if the Australian uh, immigration after validation accept the application, then there's receipt of application to applicant via the registered migration agent. So the migration agent is going to send to us uh, your uh, request, the request from the acceptance from 
the home office, uh, home affairs what office, and that will be sent to the applicant. Now it is at this stage where we think that all the documentation, the valid documents have been uploaded. It is at this stage that we take 60% of the processing fee. At this stage, we think that we've done all our validation. If there is any rejection, then the rejection would be that some documents were falsified that we didn't know. But at this stage, we pay the immigration office, I mean, the processing fee. We take your fee, we use some to pay the fees. At this stage, uh, the stages that we have to pay some money, we do that. And if you look at this place, what we have said that 30% out of that 60%, okay, will be retained. So we find that you have provided fictitious documentation. We don't have to bear the cost of what we have paid on your behalf. We don't have to do that because we didn't provide that. So all our applicants are responsible for their documents. And you realize that from point one up to until five, we have not taken any application fee. We are not interested in that. We have not taken any fee from the agents. We have done that to ensure that we can only take fees when we are very sure that the application will go through, even though we are not the one who is going to give the visa. And being an immigration consultant for this period, we know how the processes work. That sometimes they come to us with feedback and to ask some questions to validate, I mean, the process. So they know their role. They know the immigration, uh, I mean, uh, licensed immigration officer's role. So we believe that at this stage, when you pay the 60%, all things being equal, it is more unlikely that you will be rejected. I'm saying that more unlikely, we don't issue the visa. But having gone through the system, that's what we know. But if there is any uh, something, it may be they, they did a search on uh, I mean, Facebook and realized that you, you are involved in some scandalous uh, something or police have put wanted somewhere and we didn't know, okay? There's nothing we can do about it. But other than that, we shouldn't have any process uh, problem at the stage of five. And then applicant receive notification of ready visa. Once the visa is ready, and I'm saying that the, the, the more detailed your document, the shorter the process for you. The more detailed your document, the shorter, somebody used 10 days to get a visa, the shorter the process for you. So let's take notes because when they need anything, they would have to come back. You didn't provide this, provide this. When they have any doubt, they, more, they want more documentation to. to for, for authenticate what, what they have. And which is why on the form, we have given a comprehensive what, I mean, requirement so that it captures everything. There's one of the requirements we are asking strong ties to Ghana. Somebody was asking that question. Strong ties to Ghana. If you are involved in any community, I mean, service, or you belong to any group, youth group, or you are part of uh, any uh, social group or Anything that makes you a Ghanaian, that's a strong ties to Ghana, or maybe strong ties to Ghana or Nigeria or whatever. Anything that holds you to your country, it could be irrelevant to you, but very, very important. If you are the chief linguist, take a letter from them that you that's the job you do. If you belong to Rotary, you belong to the uh, lion something something all those groups you can take a letter for them if you belong to a church and you play a role indicate that you belong to that church and these are documents that are very important because what they go to do they go to affirm the fact that you have a, a, a that kind of strong ties towards ghana and for which reason i mean when you are done with whatever you're doing you come back to your country so 90 percent of the process i mean takes four to seven weeks and it will take maximum, I mean, three months, 90% of the, the process from four to seven takes, uh, I mean, three months. And I'm telling you, once your documentation is, is, is very valid and authentic, you will spend less than, I spoke to uh, 
Wanga also, who, who was recently given, uh, I mean, uh, what do you call it? A business visa and said, Dr. Boy said, three months is too much. But, but we would want to give ourselves that kind of period so that if there are any back and forth, we can, we can address them. Now, there are two streams that we are looking at. In fact, there's a third one that talks about scholarships that we're going to deal with later. But there are two streams. The first one is the working, the 12-month working visa. And that one comes without the ILEX. The ILEX is the International <coughs> English Language Something Certification. And it doesn't only indicate that you speak uh, good English. It's, it's a kind of a validation to ensure that you can communicate in the English language. That's the essence of it. So the working visa doesn't come with that. The 12 month working visa doesn't come with that. And what they are saying is that come to Australia yourself and look forward. And if you are coming to Australia, as much as possible, they want to make sure that you have uh, in your bank statement, and I'm telling you this for the first, your bank statement, you have uh, some uh, appreciable amount of money. And they are talking about between $2,000 and $3,000 equivalent. That's what they are talking about. Okay. So between, between 2000 and then 3000 When I heard that, I was excited. The reason is that it means that these guys know, they know what they are doing. If you get what I'm saying, because they know that you are looking for a job. So if you are looking for a job, you cannot ask for $10,000 in somebody's account. I mean, that's, it's, it's not possible. But they are saying that a three month bank statement, which is showing an inflow of cash every month, but the balance should be, I mean, between $2,000 to $3,000. If you know the city equivalent or the Naira equivalent, or the rupees equivalent, okay, or the shillings equivalent, you should have that in your bank account. And that should be part, when you print the statement, that should be part, three months bank statement with a balance of a minimum $2,000, equivalent of $3,000. It shouldn't be a dollar account, but equivalent in home, your, your uh, home currency. So take note of that. So, that is what the bank statement did. That, I mean, very important document. I mean, they require because they think that they, 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 the thinking around this is that $2,000 should be able to take care of you for the next three months in Australia. Should, you, should it take you three months to get a job? But why is, it, is, is, is the Home Affairs talking about three months? It means that they are sure that with granting you visa with your skill set within three months, Give or take, you should just, just get, get a job. That's what it, it means. Other than that, they require, they're giving you 12 month working visa. They, they would rather require an account that has money that should take care of you for the next 12 months. But that's not what they are requiring. And that, for you, the agent, you need to understand this so that you can explain to the, uh, the applicant. Then we have the skill stream. For the skill stream, that one you need the island. So once you, you they submit, uh, our immigration consultant submits, it will go to a skill assessor to do the assessment. Okay. And then once they are done with the ass assessment, a sponsor will pick you, and a sponsor will be the company who wants, I mean, you to work for them. They will pick you and then give you an offer. And then they go through the process. Once you are in your home country, you will get your offer, offer, your visa, and everything will be sent through us to you. So that is the skill stream, and that's what requires the islets. So these are the two that we are talking about. The third one is the, uh, for the, the school, okay? Uh, the scholarship and those who want to go to school. There are opportunities to get scholarships, and then Margaret is going to talk about this extensively next week. And then you know the various um, streams you have with that. So you have the temporary visa, which our process, it falls under the 12 month working visa. And then we have this, the skill stream that, I mean, of course, you're going there to work. 
and then you get a sponsor who is going to give you the job offer and everything. And the last one is the one that you are doing. You are going for, I mean, for education purposes. And then there are scholarships that are also available. So we'll be providing a list of schools. And then if you are interested, we can start the process for you as well. So this is the actual the the, the process that we go through for um, for um, getting the person enrolled on the this visa I mean program. Now the twelve month working visa costs five thousand two hundred. You can take a screenshot of this five thousand two hundred. It is out of this five thousand two hundred that four hundred dollars is for the agent. <laughs> and we've made it lucrative for you, all right? Because there are a lot of expenses to be paid. Our vision is not to make too much money from this process now. But rather, our vision is to get a very solid process, foolproof, that is credible, that will be rated by the Australian Home Affairs as an immigration agent that has very good what record. That's our, 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 our main objective. So we are not too much interested. And this fee doesn't include tickets. It doesn't. This is the processing fee. So out of 5,200, we're going to give you $400 for the 12 months. And we are still going to give you $400 from the skill stream, which is also $6,000. So the public price is 5,200, 6,000 uh, for skill stream, 5,200 for 12 months working visa. And then your commission is the $400 on it. And we have said that you are free to offer other services, but we do not, we do not allow agents to charge extra on the public, I mean, price. In addition to this, understand that our, our, our process is not like the others. I mean, there are people who take people to Canada and all that, and after they are paid everything, they get to Canada, and then whilst they are working, they, are, they, they, they have blocked about one year salary. They are taking $2,000 each month. We are not interested in that. We are not interested in that. If you have your own arrangement with the, the applicant, that you are going to sponsor his process and have a contract with the applicant, that is a different thing. We are not into that. Our main objective is to get you to Australia through the 12 month working visa or through a sponsor. That is what we are aiming to do. So I think uh, I'm done. As I said, we are not going to take too much of your time. If there are any questions you can ask, but I don't know, Margaret, are you on the line? Margaret, are you on the line? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So, oh, wonderful. Um, Margaret, if you're online, um, I would like you to introduce yourself to the agents. Uh, we will be happy to hear from you this week. If it is possible to show your face. Um... Okay, so I'll just brief. <laughs> no, it's very hard. It's it's difficult. My internet connection is very poor. Oh, okay. And, um, I'll just I'll just briefly introduce myself, and then next week, um, during my presentation, I'll be able to um, have my video on. But my name is Margaret Under Ofai. I am originally from Ghana. I left Ghana when I was age seven years of age and um, arrived in Australia in 1984. I work as a migration consultant and have been doing that since 2006. Um, Australia is a very um, amicable place to um, consider as a, um, as a choice of um, migration. It is not as competitive as some of the other countries, the US, Canada, um, US, Canada, and uh, what's 
some of the other European countries. Um, there's a range of visas that um, Doc has been talking about in terms of skilled visa, temporary visa, and student visas. So there is great opportunities here. The economy is a young economy, and so the opportunities are um, enormous um, for anybody with skills in areas of engineering, teaching, um, health professionals, also those professionals who don't have a uh, bachelor qualification, but uh, is a plumber or a electrician, um, somebody who has a trade, there are opportunities for them to migrate to Australia and to join the um, labour force in the area of their profession. I look forward to speaking to you more about what Australia can offer you and the whole process um, as an agent um, trying to enlist um, applicants to make the choice of migration and Australia as a choice of migration. So I look forward to speaking with you all next week, Thursday. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so let me look at the questions and then, um, so for introduction, I saw Kafui uh, with multimedia. Uh, I have uh, Mavis also with multimedia Ghana group. And then um, also Kujo Yangsen, who is not from Joy, but uh, from Zara developers. And then we have Princess, Princess Agri is asking a question that does these fees cover <coughs> dependent? These processing fee cover covers dependents. It's cover dependents. This processing fee cover dependents. So please let's uh, take note of that. We are not charging any extra fee. These are your dependents. Okay. So and interestingly, Michelle went to Australia, traveled to Australia with her husband. So take notes, take notes. And then I recall doctor saying the processing fee uh, for is doctor saying is processing fee for the applicant. The processing fee is the fee the applicant is paying. Is it either 5,200 or 6,000 of which your commission is the $400 in each case. So that is what it is. There are no upfront fee. In fact, it doesn't cost anyone to do the registration. I mean, or fill the form online. It doesn't, it doesn't. But what we have said is that there are some services that they may require that you would want to provide, okay? So for instance, job work is providing a service where these guys will be trained and be issued with certificate. The training is going to be free. But the issuance of the certificate, they will pay for it because we have to pay, I mean, Matadish University for the issuance of the certificate. But the training itself is free. Okay, that is a service we are providing for those who have some skill but do not have what certificate. So, for instance, if you are a, plumb a plumber, but you don't have any certificates on plumbing, this it's an area that we'll be looking at. If you are a painter, you don't have a certificate in that. They need all these skills set in Australia. So we'll be providing those services to you. But when it comes to the certification, you pay. And we are saying that you go to job work and register, sign up yourself. If you, the agent, can get these guys all set up on job work because some of them might not be IT solving. So that can be done. So just take note of that. Is there a contact person after meeting this? Yes, there is a contact person. We, my good self, I'm here. And also, um, uh, Chris is also here. Because we are dealing with the agents, you deal with me directly. But when we're dealing with the applicants, they come to you. So, um, uh, my number, Chris, are you online? I've just posted yes, my doc. number online. Chris? Yes, Doc, I'm online. Yes. Uh, so, Chris, you post your number. Uh, let me see. Okay. Bison. Now let's do this together. Um, and then we have uh, Chris. I think on the application 
uh, online on the on the, on the flyer. Yes, on, on the flyer you have it there. So the same contact number we have on the flyer. Uh, Chris, if you, if you have the if you have the fly, uh, flyer, I can give you um, access to share. I can I can just do that. But I just yes, posted um, my number. You can see it. Um, and if you see a number of Chris is on the flyer, you can do that. Okay, then the other question is, um, can the website be displayed? Yes, we can display the website. I think I've done, I've done that. Um, so let's see the website. So there's a website. Okay, I can give you the URL. The URL is in the chat. <clears throat> and also, what we can do is also uh, send the PDF form also to you. Let me see if I can attach it here. So it's here. Let's see if it's be able to attach. Yeah, I've attached it. Please, can you see it? Can you see the PDF file? We have the link to the site and you also have the PDF file. Can you see it? We are also going to, for all successful agents, we are going to have an exclusive training for you. And for those who are outside Ghana, we have those connecting from India and all that. We'll do it online. But for those who are within greater Accra, we can have a face-to-face -face meeting and take you through the process. Okay. Yes. So yes. Any, any more questions? Do you, do you, so you've seen that the, the so you can download the the file as well. You can download it. Any more questions? We have about 27 people online and I'm expecting to hear some questions. So I've, I've answered all the, the questions. Hello, doctor. Yeah. Okay, please, for the three, um, for the working visa, you said, um, can, they, can, they also, uh, can they also go with dependents? And if yes. so, go with dependents. The bank statement, does it also require 2,000 to 3,000 minimum. So, so, so let's assume, okay, if you are spending a minimum of $2,000, right? Let's do, because you see the requirement is up to three months. And I think uh, uh, Margaret is here. Let me allow, Margaret, are you online? Margaret, are you there? Yes, hello, I'm here. Can you briefly respond to this? If you are having dependent, I mean, what are we looking at in terms of the bank statement? All right. Um, so the bank statement is for the temporary activity visa. It's yes. The, that amount of two thousand five hundred to three thousand five hundred um, for the whole family. That includes um, children and 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 the dependents, I mean, sorry, children and spouse as well. Um, okay. Because the, yeah, because the temporary activity visa, the whole purpose is that they are coming to study, sorry, they're coming to work in Australia. And so, you know, you're not expected to have, be having an enormous amount of money. Like the student visa, the student visa requires that you have a significant amount of money because the whole purpose of coming to Australia is to study. Um, so in terms of the um, student visa, the dependents, in meaning the spouse and children, um, are also required to have a, a certain amount of money um, dependent upon how many children um, there are on the application. And okay. it's generally um, the living Living cost is generally around five thousand um, dollars for 
student visas. Okay. Okay, so um, for clarity, the 2,500 to 3,500 uh, equivalent in your bank account includes dependents. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. But that's also for the temporary activity visa. For the, for the temporary activity Not, visa. Okay, yeah. Correct, yeah. All right. So the distinction, the major distinction is the work, the purpose, the purpose of um, travel migration. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I think that 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 makes life easy for the agents now. Um, <clears throat> it makes the process very fluid for them. Madam, are you okay? Please. Yes, please. I'm okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So please, have you gotten the, uh, let me project again the, um, um, hello. Yeah. So can one use a business account instead of a personal account? Margaret, that, that's, that's also goes to you. Yes, um, you can use a business account as opposed to a personal account. Obviously, okay. as long as it's in your it's in your name, if it's not in your name and if it's in your business name, it can be linked to your name. Your as name. long as any yeah, so as long as any money that any bank statement that you provide has okay. um is linked directly to your name. Okay. So um so if um in case I have dependent going, is there uh, going to be a school, you know? research or placement for if they are underage as well or oh, i have to do that if you have if you bring your children along it is expected that they go to school okay. and when they go to school depending upon whether they're at university or secondary school or primary school you have to pay mm -hmm. um upfront fees which is international okay. fees which ranges okay. anywhere from five thousand to ten thousand dollars um, okay. to pay for your children to go to school. Okay. Thank you. So so um this this dollars you're talking about is Australian dollars, right? Or it's US dollars. No, yes. When I'm referring to any um form of money in terms of um the visa um visa process, you know, visa application. No, no, the visa yeah. The visa application is in US dollars, but what we are talking about now uh, with, respect, with, uh, with respect to the, the school of the kids, and is it in Australian dollars or in Australian US? dollars? That's okay. Australian that, dollars. That, that's that's of important. The yeah, because other than that, 5,000 US dollars is too high <laughs> compared to Australian dollars. Yeah. Uh -huh. Madam, is it clear? And and Margaret again, the balance yes, in the, the the balance in the in the bank account is also Australian dollars. Is that correct? That's also Australian dollars as well. The balance in the um, bank account is okay. Australian currency. Okay. So what we can do is, I think someone can just check. You understand the the Australian dollar to your country, your home country um, uh, currency. And that, that should settle uh, some of these things. Hello, doctor. Yes. Please, at what point does agents receive permission? Is it after the, uh, the client has traveled or after the clients have received? Uh, so, so, so if 60% of the amount is received, You'll get equivalent, I mean, 60% of, of your, your fees. You understand? Okay. Yes. You, you get, do, do you understand what I'm saying? That is that because we have offered a service. Okay. So uh -huh. we get the $400 after the 60% has the, Yeah, after, after, yeah. No, you get the 400, 60% of the $400, right? 
Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh, of the four hundred dollars, and then when they pay the rest of the money, you get the the rest of the forty percent. Oh, okay, thank you. Any more questions? I don't know if I'm supposed to ask this question here or maybe later if it's one on one because I don't no. know. You no, know please. that flat application is processed by a specific agent. Is it configured like we'll get there later? Oh. Say, say that again. How do you know that a specific application is processed by a specific agent? Since we do it online, is it a general form that we are going to okay. fill? Okay, form? and that is why. Uh, that is why, that, that is a good question. In fact, it's good you ask that. So on the form, on the form that you fill, that's why I'm saying that your role, okay, your role, for instance, to um, that of um, your role as an agent is to do the application on behalf of the applicant. Because there's a, a, a section where you have to indicate, okay, the name of the agent. But indeed, when you are, when we you fill the form, you uh, you will go through the process and you become an agent. There will be an agent number that will be given to you. So that section either they enter the agent number or your name, and then we will know at our end that this particular application is coming from this person. And if you do the application yourself, it's, 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 it's easy, okay, for you to do. Sometimes you ask them to use your code, but they will not, they will not do that. It is, when we are done with this and the agents, they come on board. We, uh, management is thinking of making the form, okay, mandatory to use the agent of, uh, uh, the services of what agents. Okay, so we don't have, I mean, those who just come in as uh, it's something that is under discussion that we can also look at. But for now, you do your registration yourself. And that is the service that you are offering for which reason you are being paid. I am a bit, I'm a bit confused with the agent and the personal. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit confused. So uh, does yeah. it mean we have agent amount? Okay, so if I want to apply, I have to go through an agent. No, Is now you don't have to go through an agent. So if I okay, this, so this, I can just this, do it no, online. No. Let me, let me, yeah, you can go online. But the point is that uh, this meeting was supposed to be for recruit recruitment agents. Okay. Oh. Okay. Not for. So you are fortunate to be here anyway. There are good information that you have, and the reason okay. is this. The reason is this. <laughs> if you go through agents. I mean, mm -hmm. the agent, this education that we are giving to the agent is going to take you through this process. In fact, okay. Okay. When, when you don't go through the agent, take note, when you don't go through, mm -hmm. you are still paying 5200 Okay. When you go through, you are still paying 5200 Okay. You understand? So we, yeah. we, we, in a sense, we are just telling you that if you come to us direct, Mm. We may have to find someone who led you to us, okay? Okay. So mm. that the process is smooth in terms of okay. getting, because you need to see those guys that this is their office, a place that other than that, wake up one day and then our office will be full. But once we have the yeah. agent, we decentralize what the process. So okay. there is no change in price when you have an agent or you don't have an agent. Okay. I hope so in this sense. case, if I, yes, it does. So in this case, if yeah. I want to apply, so now it has to go through an agent. So an agent needs to help me. Yes, you know, with my to process. go through the process. Okay. To go through the, okay. and there are a number of agents. Agents, you have a client now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you go but I think I, 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 I saw this on um, Kafri's page. Yes. So it's true head. So so it's, it's Kafri, are you an agent? <laughs> and Kafri is an agent. So talk to Kafri. Okay. Right? Okay. 
All right. That is an agent, so talk to that way. But, but Thank you. The agent, has, so to the extent that the next meeting, the consultant, Margaret, from Australia is going to have a full session with them. All right, a full session okay. with them. And then, I mean, let them understand the, the whole process. So these are things that we are, so when you come to the agent and you're asking a question, so do I need a bank account? What do I need? How much do I need in it? All these things are discussed, all right? So that okay. it is easy for you to go through the process. And we are very strict with this because we just only want only valid documents to go through the process. And Margaret- So what does it take to become an agent if I want to be a volunteer agent now? Oh, now you don't want if to. I want to apply. No, I, I want to apply, but yes, still, you know, help other people. So then it makes me an agent. <laughs> Madam, change your mind. Oh. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. I mean, you know. So, so, so this is what it is. Please, have you seen what we have? I think, I think you kind of have a very, a very sweet voice if you can reach uh, to our hearing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't have my reading glasses. Let me zoom a bit. Okay, so it's Australian Working Visa Application. And yeah, that's all I see. Oh, sorry. And with let the me, home... let, No, let me, okay. let me. I think I, I projected the wrong. All right, so that's it. Okay, okay so is the registration with um, Knowledge Web um, Center, no fees required. And physical location as an office. Okay, so understand how to assess online application. Understand fairly the traveling business, traveling business, and complete online application form on behalf of applicant. Able to meet a target of five registered clients in a month. Okay, all right. So it said, yeah, I think it's. It's well explained. So you send, again, all agents, take a screenshot of this. You send a message to us through the mail, this mail that I, I was on the Zoom call or have watched the Zoom video. And I qualified with all this requirement, the requirement shown, and that I want to apply as an agent. Then we will give you send you a message with a form for you to complete. Once the form is completed, we would have to see your office. Okay, for that, it's very, very important to us. For those who are outside the country, we we'll have a Zoom session with you, and then you would have to show us where your office is. Um, we have not introduced business registration. We, we believe that we can go with you. So. If you're able to grow this, and there are some uh, traveling agencies on the on the call. I mean, they've been doing this thing for donkey years. Okay, they're already there. But those who are not well established, and you are now starting, to make sure that you get all the documentations you need. But the major requirement that is that you have to have a physical office, and of course, know how to use the online online application and all that and then we have indicated the things you shouldn't do but well, this is very very important to us because once you are an agent you are you are working for us okay and we do not expect some of these you, you go and say the thing is five thousand two hundred say it's, it's seven thousand and all that there are some agency they offer they provide other services, like I said, other services like uh, uh, or, uh, the person doesn't have a passport, he wants to renew. You could do those things for, they are, they are all services. But for the processing fee, let's leave it intact. Periodically, quarterly, we'll have a review discussion and then we see how to, I mean, agree in terms of the process, the fees, and other things. Periodically, we'll be doing that. But for now, to start with our first or maiden agent, this is how the procedure should be. 
Are we good? Hello, doctor. Yes. Yeah. Please, the processing fee, will there be a receipt issued by the office so we send to the student, then they know the exact what of transparency? Yes, so they know the, every receipt will be issued from, from our office. The office, okay. Everything, so you are just the agents. Everything, in fact, okay. we are liable. Okay. We are liable when, that's why we are asking you not, not to do this, not to do that. Okay, okay. And once you come in, there will be a contract I mean, that will be given to you and the terms and condition, what your, your powers are, the things that you are supposed to do and the things that you are not supposed to do. So you, whatever you are doing, you are operating in our name. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, to, to add as a follow-up question to what she just said. Um, so what if um, the person pays to the agent? Can an agent also with this requirement, you know, have a receipt, you know, in their name, just for record's sake? before it even gets to you. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the better, That's, okay. the better, yes. The, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. There's nothing wrong. To the extent that, to the extent that, with time, these receipts will be up online. So you have your own portal and you can issue okay. your own receipts. Okay. But with okay. knowledge web okay. there, but you, you will do the issuance. Okay. 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 Hello, I want to ask one question. Please do. This is famous. Famous from Qatar. Qatar? Yeah. Oh, famous. Sir? Famous. I've not, I've not <laughs> forgotten about you. Eh? <laughs> <Just that. laughs> I've not mm. forgotten about you. It's good, it's good that you showed up. The pressure, oh, okay. the pressure has just subsided. Okay. <laughs> All right. The pressure has been subsided, so I, I'm going. I'm going to connect to you very soon. I've done some preliminary, I mean, uh, work, <coughs> work, but I want to just complete it and send it to you. All right. Oh, okay, okay sir. Mm. Okay. Yeah, famous. So let's let's talk. Talk. the twelve month visa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do the applicant need to require a work permit? No. And instead of work permit, I'm talking about offer letter, offer letter. <clears throat> offer letter from? From employer over, or you go straight forward with the visa. You go straight forward with the visa. So if you go straight forward with the visa, what of the accommodation issue in Australia? And that, 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 that's okay. Let me allow Margaret to talk about. That's why we are saying that in your, in your account, you need a minimum of uh, between 2,500 to 3,500 Australian dollars, yeah. it's equivalent in your account. Okay. okay. I am going yeah. to Australia. I've asked Margaret to send me a list of uh, hotels and their charges. And, and she's done that. Okay. Just look at the, okay. the total cost. And if you look at the cost, it's in Australian dollars. I think for our home currency, the Australian dollar is about 8 cities or so. I was just looking at it here. So, oh, okay. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's how much. And they, they believe that, that that amount should be able to settle you. So you can probably get an Airbnb or an, a hotel and lodge for that period and look for your work. And they believe that within three months, I mean, you should be able to learn something and, and, and learn maybe a job. Now, it is very important. I keep stressing this, this, this point. Why will a government say that I'm, give, I'm opening my borders for people to come and look for job. Did, did you get the whole thing? Yeah, I got it, you're right. But you know, if, uh, if this is a government, as government has opened it already. So we are we acquired a visa and we are in Australia now. Yes. You did not get the specific field. So meaning you have to accept anything that comes on your way due to secure your stay in accommodation. No, but what, what would you mean? want to famous? What would you want to do? So there's the skill stream. Okay. Okay. Very honest let, with you. Let us you. Let us you. Okay, let me use my profession. I'm a truck driver. Mm -hmm. Truck driver, I go to Australia now. And I'm not getting my food, meaning I have to just go into a different something that I think I can do. Just to get money for my accommodation issue. So 
Okay, I'll come in, but I'll allow Margaret to comment on that. I'll come in and then, Margaret, are you there? Hello? Yes, Margaret. Yes, so what was the question? Now, um, Femos, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. I am asking that let's assume, uh, let's use my profession as a truck driver. Now mm -hmm. I do all the processing thing and I got my visa, I reached Australia. I lodge in a hotel mm -hmm. looking for a job. Mm. And I'm not getting my particular job, which is uh, my field. So meaning mm -hmm. I need to accept anything at all just to secure my accommodation. Yeah, correct. So with the temporary activity visa, the temporary activity visa allows you to come to Australia to engage in an activity that is of benefit to Australia. So for example, a social, uh, cultural experience, um, a youth engagement, um, you know, just any type of activity that will provide a benefit to the community of Australia. And so in that time that you're here, you're also able to look for work in terms of any the occupation, work in terms of the occupation that relates to your profession. And so um, prior to coming to Australia, um, part of the process of applying for your visa is to is for us to um, research um, jobs that are available to Australia so that when you do come to Australia, there should be something available for you. Oh, okay. So uh, within the 12 months expiring mm. of the visa, how will you change mm. your visa? So once your visa has expired, um, depending upon what the conditions of your visa is, you may have a no further stay, which means that you have to return back to Ghana, yeah. or you may be able to apply to extend the visa, or you may uh, apply for another visa. And so, but that all depends upon the conditions of your visa. Oh. Um, yeah. So if uh, I will understood you well, Meaning the mm -hmm. 12 month visa is not mm -hmm. entitled to working visa. No, the 12 month visa will allow you to work, but it's not giving you a job. You're not coming, it's not a guarantee that you have a job. It's part of the whole process of the temporary activity visa is to allow you to come to the country oh, and okay. um survey the country and see what job opportunities there are for you but that's why i'm saying that prior to prior to um arriving in australia part of the process of applying for a visa is also to look for a job in your field so that you know we can get an idea of the businesses the locations um the locations in Australia that would be more suitable for yourself in terms of um, obtaining a job. So for example, um, so for example, you said you were a, a plumber driver. or what? I'm a truck Pardon? driver. Yeah, I said I'm a truck uh, driver. A truck driver. Yeah. yeah. So as a truck driver, um, perhaps regional South Australia, Northern Territory, um, maybe Perth, would be a location for you um, as opposed to the big cities like Melbourne and Melbourne and Sydney. Um, yeah, so it, it just depends upon what your qualification is. But the example that I've just given you is that as a truck driver, maybe um, Adelaide, Adelaide, um, Canberra, Perth, um, and some of the other regional, Northern Territory, some of the other regional areas. But that's a, a, a process that we'll go through in terms of looking for a job. All right. Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, okay, so if I should <laughs> ask to what the gentleman was trying to actually get. So let's say just in case he gets there with, within the 12 man uh, working visa and he lands a job in like a month or two, how soon can he get a working permit? I think that yeah. was what he was trying. Okay. Yes, well, that depends upon whether the visa has the condition of no further stay. 
So if the visa has a condition of no for the stay, then you'll have to go go back to Ghana and apply mm. for um, a, a, a working visa and then return mm. back to Australia. If the visa does not have a no for the stay, then you can remain in Australia and apply for um, a skilled visa, a working visa. All okay, right. but so can you check on that before maybe, I mean, because if somebody doesn't have a plane ticket to come back to Ghana and then apply, so they just do it there as soon as they land the job and so they can apply. Yes. So once they issue you with the visa, mm -hmm. um, there will be, the conditions will be outlined. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the only way that we can guarantee that they don't have a no for the stay mm -hmm. is if the documents that have been provided, are, um, the documents that have been provided uh, states that you have a very strong connection to to Ghana and that you will return back to Ghana. Okay. Ghana, but Ghana in saying that country. the temporary activity visa. So Ghana or oh, any other oh, country? Which, whichever, which, yeah. Yeah. Yes, whichever is your home country. Yeah. But um, in saying that, um, if we review the visa application, and see that you're more, more suited for an independent student visa, I mean, independent skilled visa, then the independent skilled visa is a path that we will take as opposed to the temporary activity visa. Because the temporary activity visa is, as it says, it's really just a temporary visa that requires you to return back to um, Ghana. But the um, skilled independent visa, the skilled stream, is a is a um, permanent visa that allows you to remain in Australia um, indefinitely. Okay. So, so most applicants know. most applicants will be looking towards um, the skilled independent visa. There may be some mm. applicants, you know, who may be interested in the temporary activity visa. Um, mm. But in terms of your professional status, in terms of the experience, your qualifications, that will determine which visa is best, most suitable for you. And I understand that Australia is a far a long way to travel, to come mm. back and then mm. we and then re-enter. But that's mm. why um, it's important for us to get all the details of okay. um, your qualifications, your experience, your skill set and then mm. assess as to which visa is best for you and then provide you with the information mm -hmm. um, based on, you know, the, based on the, do the documentation that you provide for us to let you know whether the independent visa is, is, is the path for you or a temporary activity visa is a path for you. Okay. All right. Are we good? Yes. Okay, and um, if I have to um, also um, put this across, I don't know, uh, maybe Margaret can um, um, confirm that for me. Um, for the one, um, the truck driver, okay, um, so this is, this is what I was also looking at. If you should go to Australia, say with a work visa, okay, and then um, that gives you 12 months, to stay and work over there. Now, um, I think you can also explore other avenues that would, you know, that will help you build uh, maybe your your standard or whatever um, um, that will qualify you um, to apply as a skill um, um, for the skill set. Okay, so let's say for the skill set now, if you have to apply, you need the IELTS. Okay, so is it the case that when you go there and then probably you have a job you are doing over there, you can apply for the um, IELTS and then write it over there. If there is anything like scholarship into maybe um, engineering, dra uh, truck driving or whatever it is, um, you can also explore that, make sure that maybe probably you've, 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 you've done that and then you have a certification or whatever. That, I think, automatically qualifies you when your um, your one um, year or 12 months visa is almost due. 
to actually apply for the skill stream, which gives you gives you what the permanent um, residency and maybe probably have a sponsor because you are in Australia. I can still have a, a company that can um, um, give you job, sponsor you. I mean, maybe from one state to the other. Uh, uh, mommy, I don't know if that is that is that is okay. Yes. So um, the major difference in terms of application is the English language test, the IELTS test. And so the IELTS test is required for the skilled um, visa. And as Christian was saying, once you arrive in Australia and you are successful in finding a job and you want to remain permanently in Australia, then the opportunity to do the IELTS test is also available here in Australia. Um, yeah, but everything depends upon everything depends upon the the individual applicant and what. Um, skill sets they have in terms of the experience, their qualifications. So Margaret, uh, one of the very important points you have raised, which I think the agents should take note is that if you use a temporal visa and get to Australia, you can write your ILET exams there. And there are processes yes. that you can go through to kind of convert into the skill stream. As to whether mm. we get a sponsor and they, they want you to come to Ghana and then fly you back, that is another matter, right? Yeah. So, so what is important is that uh, these two streams that I mean three, which we are students, uh, tempera, and then uh, the skill stream. If you do not want to write the, the islet, then you want to use the tempera, I mean visa to get there and probably complete that in Australia, that is possible, okay, you can do that. But Margaret, at a point in time, was saying that, that if you do everything here and you get there, he was encouraging, she was encouraging the, the skill stream. But if you still don't yes. have that, I think that doesn't ban you from getting to Australia. Uh, the Michelle, Michelle's husband, Michelle, the testimony she gave, she reliably told us that the husband, the company is thinking of converting, uh, I mean, making him uh, a permanent worker. It means that what he's doing now is temporary, okay? So, I mean, these things are very important. But for, <laughs> uh, for famous, uh, if I'm looking for a job and I get to Australia and I, got, I don't really get my skill, skill set, are you saying that you want to come back? You definitely have to find something to do. Sometimes it depends. And uh, one more thing, uh, the maximum point for the, you know, the IELTS, it depends on your qualification and what you are going to do. It's 6.0 mm -hmm. to 7.5. For everyone. Yeah, that is the range. Yes, correct. Oh, all right, okay. <coughs> Yeah, 6 0, 0 to 7.5, um, depending upon the depending upon the professional, the profession and the assessing authority. So each um, profession has its own assessing authority, and the assessing authority will review your documents and uh, see whether it meets their requirements according to the occupation. And so part of that process is um, going through the IELTS test, which is included in your visa application. All right, so let's, let's assume like uh, the IELTS I had, uh, IELTS guys last year I had band five. As a truck driver, yes, still I'm not qualified. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately with the IELTS test, if you don't um, yet attain the band, then you have to, um, repeat the test. All right, okay. Please, I have a question. Please, uh, Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Yes, please, can you use um, English proficiency sets from your school to place the eyelids? No, 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 no. Okay. The English proficiency test from your school, no. It needs to be... It's from your school. 
maybe in university you might have attended no it needs to be from um <clears throat> It needs to be um, the English language test that is being offered at, at the British Council, um, British Council offices in in, in Ghana, okay. and then um, they also have other alternatives as well. But generally, the IELTS, the English language test, is the most preferred um, form of assessment of English. Okay. Thank you. Also, please, if I may ask, which of the skill, you know, um, I mean, as in working categories is uh, much, you know, um, or can one get a field? You, I don't even know how to put this, but I want to know which areas are m much sought of after. I mean, so one doesn't come with a particular skill that, you know, will not get placement. Okay. So teaching, nursing, engineering, accounting, computer, IT, technology, these are the areas, um, medicine, these are the areas that are in great need um, in terms of employment employment and the labor force in Australia. Please have a social okay. work. Yes, yes, yes. Social work is also part of um, the skills in demand, okay. priority skills in demand. Okay. Oh. okay, so if one doesn't um, have qualification in us in teaching or nursing, but has interest mm -hmm. in doing it, can we be trained, you know, can we try to get the certificate here before we apply? If you don't have your um, qualifications in teaching or nursing, nursing yeah. then I would recommend, and, and you have the opportunity to study, have the financial means and the opportunity to study in Australia, then I would mm -hmm. recommend that you study in Australia only because the purpose of you studying the nursing and teaching is to migrate to Australia. Um, okay. And so it would be preferable for you to study in Australia because it makes the pathway from study to work, um, to work. a smooth pathway, as opposed to studying in Ghana and then okay. having to come to Australia and get your skills assessed and go through that process um, of the skills assessment. Okay. So is that way as a mature student or we need to just apply as in from college? Oh, you can apply as a mature age student okay. and the process is um, going to various universities and um, making the application with them. Okay. Um, once your application has been received, mm -hmm. then um, once your application has been received, then they will send you a letter of offer, a confirmation of enrollment. That confirmation mm -hmm. of enrollment is used for you to continue the process of application for a student visa um, including all the um, evidence that is required in terms of your financial status and your health, um, health insurance. And um, yes, there's a whole list of um, documents that are required, but health insurance and, and uh, financial, um, financial capability are one, two, two on the list um, of documents that you need to provide. Okay. Okay, my question. So in regards, oh. to, yeah, go ahead. Um, I haven't been through the process of acquiring the eyelids, so I wish if you can, um, tell me how I go about it. Maybe if I intend to write it within a month or two. So um, the IELTS test, the English language test, um, often people view that as a barrier or a challenge to um, migrating overseas, but it's just a, another documentation, another requirement, another criteria that, you know, all applicants who are going through the school migration stream need to go through to show proficiency in English in regards to the ability to comp comprehend 
and uh, yeah, basically the ability to comprehend. And so with the IELTS, you go to the British Council, make an appointment with them, and then you come and sit their exam. But the IELTS, just like any other exam, requires that you study for it. And so it's important that um, you spend time reviewing documentation and um, documentation and booklets so that you are prepared. It is an exam that requires effort in terms of study. Okay. And when I go online, I'll get the documents to read and prepare for it. Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We'll and wait. Doc. Yes. To, please. Um. Currently, do you know the uh, the figure, the amount uh, you you will need to be able to up, uh, write the islets in Ghana here? I don't know. That is why the agents are on the on the call. <laughs> You understand? Okay. Yeah, that's why we 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 are having the agent take some of these uh, responsibilities, and then. Um, okay. Um, Hello. Sorry, doc. If I should chip in here, Chris. This is Chris. Yeah. Concerning the the price the price of the um the IELTS. So, um, some few months ago, I knew it was I think two months ago. So it was around 2,800 and um, no, 950. So like almost okay. almost 3,000 Ghana city, but you know the dollar um, rates. So I think you would have to check it again. When you go to the uh, British Council website, you will find mm. that yeah, you'll get the price over there. The price are there. And then um, like mommy was saying, any um information you need, whatever you need to just get yourself prepared. They have all those things. So Doc, just to um, um, yeah. um, answer this question. All right. So uh, thank you so much. Um, if you are an agent, uh, if you joined and you are not uh, on the platform, the agent platform, uh, there is a link I'm providing in the in the in the chat now. You can you can use the link to join. But this is just for prospective agents. So those of you who will send uh, your application to the email I, I showed, um, you will be considered for uh, the agency job. Okay. I think that uh, we've, we've spent some quite uh, significant amount of time here. Next week, um, Margaret is going to take us through, I mean, Australia. In fact, she's going to sell Australia, I mean, to us. And mm -hmm. this should help us uh, navigate our way through as agents and also better understand the process I think a number of a lot of information have been thrown out today. We'll do, do same next week. And thank you so much for your time, Margaret. Thank you for attending. I and mean, what is the time difference between us and you? Eleven hours. It's at ten forty one p.m. at the moment. My goodness, the distance is the same as the time. <laughs> anyway. So thank the you so much. Thank you. Thank you for um, having me. I look forward to meeting you all again next week. All right. Thank you very much. So I'll put Same the link. time next week. I'll put the link the in the chat. So I won't be doing any presentation today, Anna. You said you... Oh, no, okay. No, I won't be doing any presentation. No, no, oh. sir. It's, it's better because uh, my 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 network is bad. I'm on no, the way. No, we wanted we wanted Friday. to do. It's been crazy for me. No, we wanted to do five do... minutes. No, we wanted you to do this with Margaret, right? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. With Margaret, uh... we wanted you to do this with Margaret. But if you still want to do some five minutes presentation, and you have access, that that will be very helpful to the. Um, to, to the, okay, let me let me. Okay, if you want to do that, 
yeah, yeah. in a minute. I, I knew we were going interested. to. Yeah. All right, sir. Let's let's see what I can do. For them to see what goes on on the online form. Yes, on the website. Yes. If if it could, uh, okay. You I, have I the opportunity to, to share your screen right? so you can do that. <clears throat> yes, yes, I am doing that. Can you see my screen now? We can. So guys, Fifi, Fifi is the head of so our technical is... team. And um, so he's going to do this presentation. Fifi, let me end this section 